In this video, I wanted to briefly talk about the chart on page 145 in this book, Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering. And I know this chart is in Essentials of Chemical Reaction Engineering as well, but I'm not sure which page it's on. So it's this chart, it's figure 4-1, and it's called Isothermal Reaction Design Algorithm for Conversion. And that's what it looks like. So this, this kind of sums up, this chart kind of sums up everything that you've done up until now, so chapter one, two, and three. And the reason why I like this chart is because it, it's basically how to go through and solve these problems with logic. And like what it says in the book, if you solve chemical reaction engineering, engineering problems by using logic, uh, one of the primary goals of this chapter is to solve chemical reaction engineering problems by using logic rather than memorizing which equation applies where. And the reason why you want to do that is because you can basically have an a infinite number of combinations and so trying to memorize which equation applies where is <laughs> I mean if you want to sit and memorize that many equations then you can but I like to just use this um, logic. So I wanted to just go through that a little bit. I mean, you can look at the chart, but um, I think that just seeing everything summarized is really helpful. So first of all, you have a problem and you're given the information. And I've kind of gone through, like, as you read the problem, write down everything. So what kind of reactor it is, what information it gives you, like what's the molar flow rates, what's the volumetric flow rate, what's the concentrations, and so just write down everything the problem gives you. And then you always start these the same way. So first of all, you would start with a mole balance. So and that was uh, chapter one. And this would be this, whatever's flowing in minus whatever's flowing out plus whatever's being generated equals what's accumulating. So if you remember the mole balances, you wouldn't actually use this, this, you wouldn't start with this equation, you would start with the equation for the type of reactor you have. So if you have a a batch or whatever. So that's the next step. So where you go to a mole balance for specific reactor. And this was chapter two. So this is where they where we started writing the mole balances in terms of conversion. So then you had so for instance batch was Na naught dx dt is equal to minus RAV. CSTR was the volume is equal to Fa naught x over minus RA. And I'm not going to write down the other two, but so you remember these. So you would go to, you would write this down depending on what kind of reactor you have. And then you and then the next step would be the rate law. So this is all the mole balance. So then in the chart, it has a question. It says, do you know the rate law? Because sometimes you know what the rate law is. And if that's the case, then you can just you can just go straight straight ahead because you you know what the rate is so then you can just evaluate your equations either numerically or analytically to determine what the reactor volume or time is or in the case of a PBR what the weight is but if you so I'm just gonna write that real quick so um, rate law and then if Yes, then evaluate. 
So then if you, it's no, like you don't know what the rate law is, then you would come up here, and this is where you would go on and evaluate the rate law. And so for instance, if it was, So if it, say you have a reversible, um, say you have a reversible reaction, then it would look like this. Okay, CA, CB, minus CC over KC, or if it, it could look like this. So, I mean, you remember writing these, so it, you just need to write your rate law depending on the information you have for the problem. And then if you don't know the rate law and you have to go through and evaluate it like this, then you also need to do some stoichiometry. So you need to write the equations for CA, CB, CC, etc. So stoichiometry. And then so for instance that would be the CA equals CA naught 1 minus X CB equals CA naught theta B minus B over AX and remember this is for the no volume change or and so if for instance if you had a volume change then it would be CA CA naught 1 minus X over 1 plus epsilon X so just make sure you're using the right concentrations depending on what what you have so and then the next step would be so if you have no pressure drop then at this point you're ready to combine everything and solve your problem and so if you end up with a problem that you can't solve analytically then you would solve it numerically at this point using either MATLAB or polymath or whatever you use to solve those problems and but if you have a pressure drop, then you need to go a step further and write an equation for pressure drop. And so that ends up looking like this. dy over dw equals minus alpha over 2y 1 plus epsilon x. And then this y is equal to p over p naught. And then at this point you would combine all of these equations and so if you had the pressure drop you would then combine all these equations so your mole balance, rate law, stoichiometry, and the equation for the pressure drop. So in this case you're, you're well assuming you're, you only have the two equations then you would have the mole balance and the pressure drop would be your two ODEs that you're solving. Anyway I highly recommend going and looking at this table on page 145. It, I feel like it's really helpful for approaching these problems because as they get more complex you're going to want a method to where you can just step through and solve it in an ordered fashion.